You'd be surprised 90% of a data engineer's day is not writing code. I know it sounds shocking, but today I'm going to reveal to you what the actual day in the life of a data engineer at a big tech company looks like. So I'm going to break it down in three simple steps. I'm going to talk about the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, the end of the day. And then at the end, I'm going to share how you can determine whether this is a career that you want to enter and whether or not you can thrive in it, depending on, you know, are you a full transitioner? Are you already in tech? or you're already in data and then i'll give you a little nugget at the end where you go and learn more about that topic at hand so let's jump into it what is a data engineer day look like let's start with the beginning of the day and i'm also going to share with you what i would have done differently knowing what i know now so the beginning of the day, let's define that 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. At big tech companies, most of that time is actually spent doing meetings, doing stand-ups, catching up with, you know, slacks, emails, and really it's, I would call this in the bucket of talking to other people, collaborating, right? And so the first 15 minutes might be, you know, a stand-up. You and your team get together, everybody goes around and says, hey, this is what I got done yesterday. This is what I'm going to get done today. This gives you a chance to figure out, hey, what is everybody on my team working on? But it also gives your manager a chance to get a very holistic picture as in, okay, I know what my team is working on. Maybe there's something more urgent, something of a higher priority that needs to be um, addressed today. So maybe we can put this other thing off until next week because it's less important. And so um, 15, you know, maybe 30 minute standups at most, they're pretty, pretty common at big tech companies, especially in tech teams, because it gets messy in terms of like what people are working on. And so that's the first 30 minutes huddling with your team. But the next hour or two, you can still have meetings, but this is where the meetings vary a lot. So one example of a meeting is, is you're meeting with cross-functional teams. So if you're in a team of data engineers, this is where you might go into a meeting with a data, the data science team or the software engineering team, listening to what they're doing. And I'll be honest, it was pretty annoying because 50 to 80% of the meeting, it's kind of irrelevant to you. But then there's that one instance where they are like, oh, by the way, is, you know, is Chris on the call? Is that data engineer on the call? I had a question about this one thing over here. And so a lot of the time you're just listening in. Hey, 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 real quick. If you are looking to land a higher paying data role, then there will be a link in the description or in the comment section for you to fill out a form and then book a call with my team who has already helped over 2000 people get a higher paying data role. And we hope that you are the next person that we help. And so all you have to do is click on the link below. And if you don't want to help, no worries at all. Keep watching the video, keep enjoying it. And yeah, let's go back to the video now and kind of catching up and, and being updated, which is okay. But again, they only really might have one or two questions for you, you know, in that whole hour. And that's where like working cross functionally, I think a lot of people can see that as a, you know, a, a waste of time. This is where people say meetings are a waste of time. So I definitely understood what they what people mean when they say that. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. But at the same time, that one or two questions that they have for you in that one hour might be very critical to the business. And so I understand why it needs to happen. Um, so that's kind of the first one to two hours. And then even the third hour again staying with that middle uh, beginning of the day that we were talking about that third hour it might be like weekly meetings right so it might be a weekly all hands right it might be a uh you know org wide meeting so the data science team the data engineering team the software engineering team and the product managers all get into one room and have a weekly catch-up right so a lot of the times you wouldn't really get work done for like three out of the first eight hours of the workday and so this is where I think, you know, it, it really is something that if I would have known this back then, I think I would have pushed back on my managers and my team being like, hey, like, what are your thoughts on us having these meetings at the end of the day, right? Because knowing what I know now as a CEO, I tried to basically, well, I try to take as little meetings as possible, but even when someone does want my time, I'm always going towards the end of the day, right? And so very much, you know, trying to use the morning when I have the most energy, when I've just waken up, or I've just gone back from the gym or whatever the case is, I try to use that time to actually get work done that moves the needle. Because again, meetings are work, but you do you really need 30, 60 minutes to get a meeting done? Not really. And so, you know, I, at my company now, at Data Engineer Academy, that's what I do differently. And I wish I would have known that five years ago, I probably would have uh, pushed back harder on my team. And so that's the beginning of the day, collaborating, talking to team members, getting requirements, 
cross collaborating, make, keeping up with what other team members are doing. Let's move on to the middle of the day. The middle of the day, this is where you start to kind of code. And so what I mean by kind of code is typically with data engineering, you're doing uh, a few things. Now, obviously, we just talked about how we cross collaborated in the beginning of the day. What you end up doing is you end up actually responding to a lot of slacks, emails, bugs, questions from other colleagues, right? So you're kind of coding, but kind of not because you're not really prioritizing your thing. Now, again, you know what I know now, I would have, you know, pushing back, right? And saying no to a lot of people or even leaving people on red on slack is actually a very powerful skill because otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed by all the requests that are coming from different directions and so the middle of the day is this weird area of like okay i don't really you know have that much time to work on other people's stuff but at the same time i know i have to respond and when you're responding here for five minutes here 10 minutes here debugging something that wasn't working the other day you don't really code there in that time and so that can last another two hours i would say and then let's just say lunch was 30 minutes an hour right so you're talking about six hours of your day are already gone and you haven't really sat down to do deep work and actually code without interruption because here's the thing and again it depends on how you define code but a lot of the time you might just be trying to debug code that you built earlier in the week and that one bug might be like one line in your code which might be like 200 lines but the problem is it might take you like an hour just to solve it and so i don't know if i would call that coding or debugging i'd rather call that debugging and so you're not really coding but rather you're just like trying to fix something that broke and then if you had built the dashboard for example maybe that dashboard broke for whatever reason so now you have to fix that you have to fix tickets you have to listen to customer complaints and try to fix that and so you can call this middle of the day maintenance period not just for your customers but also for your employers or your co-workers etc and so by the time that you actually can sit down and focus where no one's bugging you and you can just code for two hours straight that's kind of the last two hours of the day this is where you start writing your sql your python on putting together the ETL pipelines, the DBT and airflow tools, sticking them together, automating things, right? Which is really important because when you can automate a task, something that would have taken a human hundreds of hours to do manually, you know, if you can get that 10 hours of hard time to automate something, then you can save 100 hours of human time and that's a lot of money for the company, right? But this is why I think, to go on a slight tangent, this is why I think big tech companies kind of get that bad rap of like, hey, you know, they're pushing employees to work really hard, you have to stay past 5 p.m., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think looking back on it, a very weird trend that I saw was that companies weren't booking meetings at the end of the day, they were booking at the beginning. And so the reason employees probably had to stay late to finish their code or, you know, stay in focus mode, stay in flow, if you will, is because they just didn't get to start actually coding or doing work until it was like 3 p.m. right and so that definitely happened for me and so by the time it was like I was done you know going on a coding streak it was like 6 7 p.m. I was still in the office and it wasn't because the manager was telling me to do it it's because when you're in the zone and coding you don't want to just stop midway right you want to keep going until you end and so at least that was the case for me and, and my co-workers and so it created this culture and environment where we were just late in the office till, till past dinner time at uh, coding and so I can see how it would create pressure and, and create this whole culture of like hey like these big tech companies are, are pushing people too hard and so that's kind of a tangent but that's really the end of the day it's where you really actually get your work done and like i said if you're staying past five maybe you goof around a little bit uh grab dinner with your friends afterwards your co-workers uh catch up with co-workers right it's a little less formal because again the day basically gets less formal as it goes but at big tech companies data engineer really really did focus on collaborating and doing their meetings at the beginning day maintenance in the middle coding at the end and so um with that said if you are in not in tech or if you are in data or if you are in tech but not in data right whatever kind of avatar you are if you will um we're gonna have a video right here difference between a data analyst and a data engineer that way you can go click on this video and see hey is there any career path that is better for me what is it that i actually need to do in order to break into those fields especially with the ai boom and everything going on whoever you are you know data is not going anywhere and so um, if you want to click on that video it will be right here and just let me know what other videos i can make and provide as much value as i can cheers